Welcome everyone to Team Referral Network's monthly webinar series, The Brown Bag Lunch and Learn. Did you bring your lunch? Or perhaps you're in a different time zone and not eat or listening to this while you're doing your lunch, but hopefully you're taking a break to invest in yourself and get some great information. This webinar series was developed to create information for the very busy business professional, whether you're a business owner, or you work and are a representative of another company, this information will apply to all of you. Today's topic is one of my very favorite, the top five things your networking partners need to know. And the continuation of that topic is actually the top five things your networking partners need to know to refer you business. I have a shared expert on the line with me today, and her name is Dawn Kasnick, and I'm gonna do a quick introduction of Dawn so you know a little bit about her. Dawn Kasnick is an area director with Team Referral Network. She has been a member for nine years and has worked as a director since October 2014. So Dawn will be coming up on her five-year anniversary this year. As a director, she works with business owners, entrepreneurs, and professionals to help them grow their businesses through relationship marketing. She enjoys meeting people and teaching others how to grow their business through mutually beneficial relationships with like-minded professionals in their community and surrounding areas. She is a resident of Upland, where she's active with the local chamber of commerce and in the community. Dawn is a wife, a mother, a grandmother, who enjoys spending free time with their family and friends, entertaining, cooking, tasting, and drinking wine, something we may share in common. She has a true passion for helping others, whether it's by referring them or by giving them her time to help them succeed. Everyone, please help me welcome Dawn Kasnick to today's webinar. Welcome, Dawn. Thank you, Kelly. It's such an honor to be here with you today. It's really good to have you on. As you know, because you've heard me do this presentation many times with your chapter members, this is absolutely a topic that I'm passionate about because I'm not sure all of our people in Team Referral Network or all of those people who are out there networking are getting all of the results they want from their networking activities. And I just feel these are key items for them to be sharing with their networking partners. And you've heard it multiple times, would you agree? Kelly, I have heard you uh, do this presentation multiple times and, and I think I've shared with you that I now also use this as one of my top presentations as well. It's vital information for our people to know. So let's dive into the topic because we will go, this webinar will be over by 1215. We promise to be super mindful of your time here. I'm just gonna start off with the number one uh, top five things. And, and I'm encouraging everybody who's listening to this webinar to please take notes as we go along here. Um, and you can even do screen captures if you wanna capture some of the information on the screen as well. But number one, sharing with your networking partners the exact type of referrals you are looking to grow your business by. And, and I wanna emphasize exact type of referrals you're looking to grow your business by. Why do we wanna say exact, Dawn? The more specific we are in asking our, for our referrals, the greater the likelihood is that we're going to get what we ask for. I agree, being super specific is critically important. And I really want our listeners to think about in terms of their networking activities right now, when you have the opportunity to present or share with your networking partners kind of who you are and what you do and what you're looking to grow your business by, are you being laser focused in giving instructions to your networking partners what you want? I find sometimes that our team members or people that I meet say, you know, geez, I'm just not getting any referrals or the right referrals for my business. And, and my first question is always going to be, what message are you communicating to your networking partners? Do you see that too? Absolutely. Uh, when people um, don't talk in actual real specific terms, we don't know how, what they're actually um, asking us for. So by being very specific, we are able to turn our listening ears on and remember what people say so that when we hear that in conversation or, or somebody asks, 
asks us for a specific referral, we can say, oh, I know that person. Exactly. You know, it's almost you, you brought up something, our listening ears, but in team, we call them our referral ears, right? You know, so we're going to turn on our referral ears. And if you have educated us appropriately on the type of referral that you're looking for, our referral ears are going to capture that opportunity for you and make that referral when we can. So, so being super specific laser focused, very important. Also want to bring in a little NLP training in here. Um, some of you may be familiar with neuro-linguistic programming as a process for you to train your brain. One of the things that's important to note in NLP, and it relates to us in the world of networking and referral opportunity, is our mind does not process ambiguity. So if you are communicating an ambiguous message when you're doing a commercial for your business, when you're out networking with other people at events, uh, when you're speaking to a group of people, if your, um, your message is ambiguous, your networking partners are not physically able to process that information. It's, you know, what I hear all the time is, you know, I'm looking for any small business owner um, who needs my services. And, and if I throw that statement out of there, out there to you all, and I say, you know, tell me any small business, does anything specifically come to mind? But if I turn around and say, hey, I'm looking to be connected to a local CPA in Upland whose practice specifically focuses on small business owners here in the Upland area. And you might even niche that down farther and maybe they're in the construction niche that they love working with contractors. So if I say I'm looking for a CPA who specifically works with contractors in the Upland area, I start getting super focused and the brain of your networking partners can then process that information. And if they can make a connection, they're able to think of it literally like that. And that gives them the opportunity to reach out to that person, make that introduction and get you going on that. So remember the mind does not process ambiguity. We wanna be super specific. Anything else you want to add to that, Dawn? No, Kelly, I think you've covered that. <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, let's go on to uh, number two of the top five things your networking partners need to know. And that is to think big. And then I want to challenge you to go even bigger. You know, thinking big isn't that easy to begin with. Uh, a lot of people that I hear, that I reach, I network with, um, I have the opportunity to interact with, interact with, are oftentimes minimizing their referral opportunity. I, I think sometimes it's because they don't want to appear audacious. I don't know, Don. what do you think? I agree with what you're saying, Kelly, but I think um, what I see often is that they, they don't know how to think big they don't know what that next big thing could be for them so they they use roundabout terms to ask for their referrals with in a less threatening manner you know if, if i'm going to ask you to be introduced to the um hr director at frito-lay because i want to introduce my printing product people are going to think well why are you so special that you want to you know meet that person so you've got to put yourself out there to shine so that you're asking for the right kind of referrals I totally agree and I, I do I think you're right I think people either aren't necessarily tuned in to what big referrals are that they really want for their business they think they are but it is actually more difficult than you think to go big um, you know, you've seen us do this exercise. It's, we've called it, um, for, we used to call it the think big exercise, but for years now we've been calling it the Taco Bell exercise. And when I do the Taco Bell exercise with a group of people, I'm, when I'm speaking to them, um, everybody gets paired up. And so each person has a networking partner and they're to share with that networking partner, each of them share this information, a really huge, big referral opportunity that they're looking for to grow their business by. And I mean, I'm not talking the everyday, you know, referral opportunity that's small and, you know, easy to come by. I'm talking about really, really, really going big. And, and of course, in team, we use the words up your ask. <clears throat> Hope you all understand that there's ASK up your ask. <laughs> um, so you want to think big and, and I observe and we, and we only give them one minute each, you know, to come up with this huge referral. And I observe time and time again that they really struggle 
to come up with a really big referral for their business in that moment. And, and I'm sitting here thinking my mind is blown because I wake up at three o'clock in the morning going, thinking big, like, oh my God, I've got to meet this person, or I wish I had this opportunity for a team, or I'd love to speak to this huge group of people. And I, you know, my mind is always constantly going crazy on that, but I, I'm not sure all of our entrepreneurs and small business owners that we know think big enough. So, so I'm throwing the challenge out there to have all of our listeners to this webinar start writing down big referrals. Use what we talked about in number one, being super specific, laser focused, but really go big. If your business relies upon large scale contracts with bigger manufacturing companies, research those manufacturing companies in the area, get the name, get the right person's name that you want to be connected to, not just their position, the company name, their position, and their name, and say, this is who I'm looking for an introduction to. You never know who people know, who people are married to, who people hang out with, whose kids go to school with who, you, you just never know. And I challenge you to get that specific with a really big referral and up your ask with your networking partners. I'll share with you, and Don, I'm gonna ask you for a couple stories here in just a minute on this too, because I know you've seen some uh, or heard some, but I um, one time, uh, heard of a financial advisor was asking to be connected to um, a top sports person, you know, somebody who is a top pro athlete. And, and it just so happened that my kids at the time went to school with the boxer Sugar Shane Mosley's kids. So I'm thinking, wow, you know, maybe if I could get this financial advisor introduced to Shane Mosley's people, you know, maybe this would be really cool. So you see how that process worked. The financial advisor had absolutely no idea that I knew Shane Mosley's family. Um, I didn't see him a lot, but certainly saw his wife a lot and their kids a lot. And you just never know what the possibilities are out there. And, uh, and I'll talk about the Taco Bell, you know, specifics here in just a minute, but Don, I want you to share some information on the think big, get bigger. The one story that comes to my mind was a member who was in the beverage distribution, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> still getting over that bronchitis, mm -hmm. um, the beverage distribution um, industry. And so they brought in products, you know, water, coffee, tea, et cetera, into small businesses and, you know, were assigned a route and everything. And she would come to chapter meetings each and every week and ask for specific businesses, like you said, with doing her research with the actual contact within an organization to just, you know, meet that person. You know, of course she was hoping for the sale, but just the introduction. And one day she came in, and I apologize, I don't remember the actual radio station she was looking for the referral for. I want to say it was um, Cola out in um, the Redland San Bernardino mm -hmm. area. And she came in and she thought, what a great opportunity. If I could get into one radio station and then be able to say, hey, I've gotten in there, I could get into others. So she asked, and a member of our chapter said, I don't know them personally. But, and I think it was a family member, you know, has a connection through a cousin or something, and she got the introduction <laughs> and got water products into Cola. That's so, so great. You know, and she thought about it driving to the meeting that morning, you know, listening to the Cola radio. And it was like, oh, wouldn't that be great if I could get in there? Now, it wasn't overnight. It took a couple of months, but she got her product in that venue that she wanted to have. That's one of my most exciting stories. It gives me goosebumps. Yes, I love that. And I really, I want to tell you that if you ask for it, it can happen, you know, but if you don't ask for it, guess what? It just it isn't going to happen. So I promised to share a little about the Taco Bell story. So I'll share that for those of you that don't know the story. Did the Think Big exercise at a group down in Orange County where we're launching a new chapter of team. There was probably 15 people in the room. We paired them all up. And uh, um, the commercial printer who came in off of Meetup, okay, so he was not connected to anybody in the group, 
got partnered with for this exercise with a 27 year old swim instructor from the local YMCA. And you could tell just by the look on the commercial printer's face that he was thinking, what the heck is this 27 year old swim instructor going to be able to help me with, with a big referral. And it was very interesting as I hung around them to overhear their conversation and kind of see how they were doing in case they needed a little coaching. And the 27 year old swim instructor goes first and he absolutely nails his big going bigger ask, okay? And that was at the time the YMCA was doing a capital campaign to build new facilities, new aquatic facilities for autistic children. And he said, we're looking for a $50 million donor Okay, who can't, who has the naming opportunity or 5 million, maybe it's 5 million, 50 million sounds really big. <laughs> Let's go with 5 million. A $5 million donor who would have the opportunity to have the facility named after them. So they were looking for a naming donor, either a philanthropic individual or an organization that had perhaps ties to autistic children um, for the naming opportunity for their capital campaign. Very specific, right? Named the dollar amount, said specifically what it was for, whether it was an individual, an organization. I think he even had a couple of foundations that he mentioned. The 27-year-old absolutely nailed his big ask. The uh, middle-aged, very seasoned commercial printer was throwing out the anybody's, everybody's, and somebody's. Oh, anybody who needs commercial printing. Everybody here in the area that owns a business would be a good, you know, somebody that you know that needs printing. You know, he could not get laser focused and certainly wasn't going big. And so as I'm overhearing this conversation, I say to the commercial printer, hey, you know, let's get really specific here. Do you have a specialty, a niche? Like, you know, do you do great printing services for people who are in the manufacturing industry? Oh yeah, I do all kinds of printing for manufacturers. Anybody specific? Oh, anybody. I'm like, oh dude, you know, work with me here, okay? How about in the transportation industry? Oh yeah, we do that. You know, but again, not getting specific. So finally, I had to drill it down for him. And I said, hey, what company have you gone knocking on their door? You are dying to get in here. They are in this area. And it would be a huge contract if you got the right introduction and landed the business. He goes, oh, that's easy. Taco Bell, right off of the five freeway here. Their regional offices are in Irvine. And that they do all of their West Coast printing out of that office. It would be a huge referral for me. I was like, finally. To which the 27-year-old swim instructor who he'd been partnered with said, who do you need to meet at Taco Bell? My next door neighbor who I'm so close to, I call him uncle, is the CEO. <laughs> now just think about that for a minute. What are the odds, okay? But it took a lot to get that information out of that guy. And I can tell you, most people aren't going to take that time <laughs> to get the information out of you. So you need to think big, go bigger, stop minimizing what you're looking for, and up your ask. Okay, that's number two. Dawn, anything else to add? No, but I'm so glad that you shared that story because that is one of my very favorite ones to share in, at team events. Yep, my favorite, one of my favorites too. Okay, so number three of the top five things your networking partner needs to know, what makes you so special? Each one of you come to the table bearing talents and gifts. And in many cases, over the years, you've done some pretty special stuff. Maybe you went to a awesome college, a prestigious college. Um, maybe you won awards. Maybe your company has recognized you and sent you on trips. Uh, maybe you've been named a top salesman. You know, there are different rewards and accolades and awards that you have done over the years that we all have a tendency to kind of hide, okay? And we hide them because we don't wanna look like we're bragging about ourselves. But I'm here to tell you in this particular instance with your networking partners, those that you have made the commitment to build a relationship with, you are helping them grow their business, they are helping you grow your business. You need to toot your horn with these people. You need to share what makes you so special. And the reason you need to do this is because then we, can take that information and we, when the appropriate opportunity presents itself, can brag about you. So let's just say um, you've been recognized as one of the um, 
one of, an, an expert in the world of health, okay? And you've received these awards for your work in the health industry. And I'm out there as your networking partner with my family, holiday time, we're hanging out and somebody starts talking about some of the challenges they're having with their health. And I can turn around and say, wow, you really need to meet the health coach that I network with. She has won all these awards. She knows all this stuff. She's an expert in this area, this area. She's certified here and certified there. I think she could really help you with this issue. See, then I get to brag about you because I know these things about you to the people in my life. And when I can share how you know, what an expert you are, how special you are, it just makes it that much easier for me to take the next step and say, hey, would you like me to have them contact you about this? Or can I get you their information so you can reach out to them? See how easy that makes us, makes it for us. So you wanna share with your networking partners what makes you so special. Um, Dawn, do you get a chance to hear about anything special with some of our members while you're out doing meetings? Well, you know, this is a really good uh, subject, Kelly, because so many people don't like to talk about themselves, you know, what makes them, sets them apart from everyone else. So I encourage members as they're taking continuing education or, you know, learning a new system for their job, or like you said, any kind of special recognition that, you know, they share that with us. And we had a, a, a dentist in uh, a local chapter who um, we used to tease him that he was the best educated dentist in the world because mm -hmm. He kept going on for you know all these additional trainings. Well, then what we realized was he was building a dental empire. You know, mm. so he, he has three offices. Um, half of his family are dentists as well, so that certainly does help. But you know, he kept doing all of these trainings so he could bring these specific services, these type of um, procedures that clients need and don't know where to get them. And so he wouldn't talk about it at first, but when we finally did get him to start talking about it, it just made it so much more easy to refer him. We all have a dentist that we know and love, or anyway, it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. the time. But, you know, so we need to know in this world where so many people do the same thing, why we should refer our friends and our, our trusted, you know, our, our loved ones, our trusted colleagues to you that makes you so different than anyone else. And if you don't tell us, we don't know that about you. So uh, with this particular dentist, it took a while, but once he started telling us, um, you know, it, it was just truly amazing all of the additional education he's taken throughout his life just to make him the best in his industry. It just makes you feel so much more confident in referring people. Because, you know, when we're referring somebody, we're putting our own reputation and credibility on the line, right? When I, when I say, hey, I got to introduce you to somebody who can help you with that, they are great that, at what they do. They better be great at what they do, right? Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't like looking foolish in front of anybody. Definitely not. You know, for me, I share sometimes when I speak that it's the mother test for me. Would I refer this person to my mother? Okay. And my mom has been gone since 2010, but I'm here to tell you that my barometer is still my mom. Okay. Would I refer this person to my mom? Or you might be your best friend or spouse or, you know, business partner, but we all have this level of trust and credibility that we're putting out there on the line. So sharing what makes you feel what you makes you so special certainly gives us more confidence in referring you. You know, one way to boost your credibility um, is to be a published author. Um, and we are just now debuting team's first collaborative book called Elevate. And I think we have 22 or 23 team referral network members who have written chapters for this book and they're sharing how they what they do in their work has elevated others their the um, subtitle to the book is raise your life and business to a higher level and each of these chapters has a person who's sharing how they do that in their world with their business and I, I think sometimes if you you know are doing some kind of publish, publishing, if you are a published author, uh, you certainly need to share that information as well. And now each one of these 23 authors get to say, say that they're a published author as well, which I think is pretty cool. And, and just so cool. FYI, there will be future team collaborative books. So if you're interested in that, let us know. 
Um, so what makes you so special is number three. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to number four. I wanna be timely here. Number four, name your powered team and create an endless source of referrals. So let's start with defining what a power team is. You know, a power team is made up of power partners, okay? And that's people who are related to your business who share your same type of client or customer or patient or member, whatever you call your person, uh, right? Don, you are very familiar with power partners. It's one of the key components of our industry is your power partners. Exactly. And if you put together enough power partners, people who share your client, you put them together in a power team, okay, then you have this incredible just cyclone of referrals going around and around and around your power team. It's a tornado of money and referral opportunity. So you want to be very specific about naming who your power partners are and ask your networking partners to introduce you to those types of business professionals. Invite them to your networking group. Go out and meet them when you're out gang networking together. This is very important in naming your power team because power partners do absolutely create an endless source of referrals and you know one of the best uh, uh, stories I have about this just relates to my own husband who you know decades ago now at this point 25 30 more or more years ago now uh, was networking with a great group of guys my husband's a painting contractor and these other people were in the home remodeling field and there was you know about eight of them and they all had a level of integrity and character they did good business they weren't your typical flaky contractors um, but they kind of made this unwritten rule or pact that they would help each other build and grow their businesses and refer each other business when they were, you know, dealing in the home remodeling or, or um, home uh, uh, improvement business. And so, you know, you had the painting contractor, the general contractor, the landscaper, the roofer, the electrician, the window tending company, the interior decorator, you know, and they would all share these referrals when it was appropriate. And to this day, you know, all of these years later, five out of those eight are still in business, which I think is a real testament to the power of power partnering and getting an endless source of referrals especially when you think about those years between 2008 and 2012 for the home remodeling field. And to this day, my husband continues to receive referrals from those same groups of people. I mean, it is truly the top thing that you can implement in your strategy for getting the best results out of your networking and relationship marketing opportunities. Truly the best in order to be able to get continuous and high quality referrals. And Don, I know you see this like literally daily Monday through Friday while you're out there entrenched with our teams and our chapter members. I absolutely do. And, and two chapters that I, I see um, in my area on a regular basis come to mind. Um, we have the one chapter that has the little, um, you know, home network, you know, power partner um, group where they, you know, there is a painting contractor who he gets into somebody's house and then he finds out that they need an electrician and guess what there's an electrician in the chapter and then there's the plumber and then we get everything all fixed up looking lovely and then we want to you know put in new floors and we want to do window treatments and you know all of that and this group of guys in this chapter the referrals that fly between the i think there's six of them is just amazing mm -hmm. every time i go there must be a handful of referrals going back and forth. So that's a pretty obvious one. But uh, another chapter I work with has, um, I like to call them my little health and wealth wellness mafia. Uh, <laughs> they have um, start, started with the chiropractor. And from the chiropractor, then it's the massage therapist and the uh, doTERRA oils and the um, uh, healthy water, the uh, Kangen water and there's a vitamin supplement. I mean, and it just goes on and on and on. And the way that they work together, you know, nobody feels threatened by the other person's, what they do or anything. They just pass referrals back and forth. They host events together. I actually saw two of these members uh, schedule their 10 minute presentations on the same day. 
And rather than doing two separate presentations, they did one presentation together, which was outstanding. The information that they were able to share about how their industries were so interrelated to each other and how easy it is to pass referrals. It was, it was one of the best in all the years I've been in team presentations I've ever seen. I love that. I think that is really, truly one of the best ways to build and grow your business through relationship marketing and referrals. And so listeners, take note, name your power team. This is going to require you to kind of sit in a room and, and get some quiet time and don't let the social media distract you, your phone distract you, your kids, anybody distract you. Really sit down and spend some time being very thoughtful about who you want to name as your power team. And, and you very specifically want to look at businesses that share your client. Sometimes people get confused with who a real power partner is, and they think the power partner is their client. No, 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 no. The power partner works with your same type of clients. You know, real estate and mortgage lender are really the easy one that comes to mind. I mean, you need to go have the client get qualified by the mortgage lender to know how much money they can spend on a home. And then the real estate agent comes in and helps them find the home of their dreams and their price point. And then the mortgage lender ends up funding it. And then hopefully you bring a property and casualty insurance agent in to do the insurance and a home inspector in to do the inspection and maybe a contractor in to actually do the work. And, you know, maybe there's, you know, some other things that need to be done prior to the home. There could be an escrow company, a title company. This is all great power partners and power teams who can refer each other business back and forth. And, and the obvious power partners are sometimes pretty easy to think about. But you also want to dig a little deeper and go into what we call out of the box power partnering as well. And so, you know, that might be where you consider, you know, connecting a divorce attorney and a hairstylist together. Sometimes the hairstylist knows that somebody's in the, um, possibly going to be getting a divorce before anybody else knows, right? They're sitting in your chair for two hours, okay? They're sharing their life with you. What's happening? How are things going, okay? And it's a great opportunity if, you know, the person was to share things aren't right. I don't know what to do. I think I need to talk to somebody. That stylist can turn around and say, hey, I have a great and thoughtful family law divorce attorney to refer you to that does a free consultation. Maybe you should chat with them. See how that's a little out of the box and not your norm. So. Go ahead, Don. You have a thought on that? I, I have two thoughts on that, actually. Um, one, I just want to um, say what a powerful statement that was about the, the hairdresser, um, because personally that happened to me. I wasn't looking for a diver divorce. <laughs> <laughs> um, I needed a personal injury attorney, and I had no idea how to even begin to look for someone. And my hairdresser happened to know this, the situation with what had happened with my son, and, um, you know, he was asking me about him and I, you know, just happened to mention like, you know, we didn't know what the next step could, should be because there was definitely a lawsuit going to be involved in this. And he went, oh, honey, I know just the person you need to talk to. That attorney didn't wind up helping us, but he referred us to the attorney who did, who got um, my son, um, a $750,000 settlement. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So very, very powerful. Um, the thing I wanted to add about the power partners and, you know, when we lock ourselves in a room and we think about, okay, who are they? Now it's how we have to share that with everybody who our power partners are. Mm -hmm. So incorporating that into our one minute business commercials or even our 10 minute presentations and giving scenarios as to how these power partners work for because sometimes people don't think the way we do again just a really good way to um, ask for what you're looking for and being very specific yep, exactly about you got to share this information communicate this information with your networking partners you know another way I see it done on social media and you probably have seen it too especially like in Facebook looking for recommendation LinkedIn has a similar service as well I'm looking for a recommendation for and you can say I'm I want to be introduced to these people as a power partner and I'm interested in building a relationship with them and then of course if you're in team referral network the logical choice is hey come meet my other networking partners I network with a great group of people on fill in the day of the week that you meet at location and time and uh, then you can get them out visiting your team chapter as well uh, so name your power team 
get your power partners lined up, let your team and networking partners know that you want to be introduced to these professionals and that you're looking to develop a mutually beneficial relationship. It's got to be a two-way street. You got to come with the mentality that you're going to build a relationship with them. You're going to help them build and grow their business through referrals. They're going to help you build and grow your business through referrals and everybody will do better as a result. Cool? Cool. All right, let's go on to number five. Sharing what you don't want. This might seem counterintuitive, but trust me, there are referrals, there are things that you don't want, and it's very important to communicate this to your networking partners. One of the best examples that I have was, again, a personal, um, personally related to me, my husband early on in the world of being a painting contractor uh, was out there networking, you know, he's meeting people, doing things, developing relationships. And one of his networking partners had an awesome referral for him. I mean, he was so excited and he shared with my husband. He said, my condominium complex is painting all 80 units in the exterior. I have introduced you and your business to the homeowners association, to the property manager. They want to meet you and get a bid. To which my husband had to say, thank you, but no thank you. I don't do projects that large. I'm a small painting contracting company. I do interior and exterior one job at a time. I got one guy that works for me. I'm a custom painting contractor and it would take me a year to paint, you know, 80 condominium complexes. And I don't think they want their painter hanging around for a year. <laughs> and the good news for that story is my husband was able to refer him to another painting contractor, but it begs the opportunity to just say and share that it's important sometimes to say what you don't do as well as what you want to do. And so sharing with your networking partners, as my husband did at that point, from that point on was, hey, I don't do large scale jobs. I can help you find somebody good. That's no problem. But I don't do large scale jobs. I primarily do custom interior, exterior work, one job at a time, you know, one property at a time. Um, so sharing what you don't want can be important. Have you seen that happen, Dawn? I absolutely have. And people have gotten themselves into trouble by accepting the referral and then they're not able to provide what the um, person needs or give them any kind of direction. And it gives a bad feeling for one, the person who passed the referral thinking that they've just done the greatest thing ever by passing this referral. And two, the you know, potential client is disappointed unless they can come up with a you know, referral like you know, Mike did with you know, sending a different contractor over to them. So, you know, we have to be very careful about what we're asking for and, and what we really can handle. Um, it's great when you can become the hero and refer them on to someone else, but if our members don't understand what the scope of what we can do is, they're going to, you know, think that they're doing the best thing ever and, and giving us those larger referrals that maybe we can't handle. Uh, a good example of that is maybe someone... Um, uh, I've seen it happen in the insurance industry where a property casualty insurance agent, you know, keeps talking about, you know, writing insurance policies for, you know, motor vehicles, for drivers, for new drivers, for, you know, old drivers, whatever. And he wasn't specific enough and he kept getting referrals for people with bad driving records. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. And the particular agency that he works with they don't allow to uh, them the agents to write policies for people with you know different levels of you know incidents on their motor vehicle record. So he kept getting these referrals for people he could not provide insurance for. So you've yep. got to be very specific. I mean, if you have a product that you, in this case with insurance, that, you know, we can write for anybody because we're a broker and, you know, we'll find an agency for you that not, might be named, you know, A to Z insurance, um, that's one thing. But when you're, you know, a captive agent like this gentleman was, and he knew he couldn't, he just kept taking the referrals and wasn't getting anywhere. He was frustrated. And so were the people who were giving him the referrals because he couldn't do anything. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's important that you and, and certainly one of the messages with that is if you get a referral that's not a good referral, 
privately go back to the referral giver, the referral source and say, oh, thank you so much. This isn't a good referral for me and I wanna share with you why. And I wanna make sure that I'm getting the right message out there. So very important, if you get something that's not appropriate that you share with the person and let them know why, because otherwise you're inviting them just to give you more of the exact same thing. We have a great uh, credit repair company that's part of Team Referral Network. And um, it was very important for this person to establish the guidelines of what a good referral was because oftentimes, you know, you think in terms of improving your credit, you know, as somebody who has terrible credit who may also just flat out be broke. And it was very important for uh, this credit company to understand that they needed to convey the message. We are not looking for people who have bad credit, who have no means or money to pay to improve their credit. We're looking for the people who have the means, the financial means to be able to pay for our services in order to be able to help them improve their credit. And so you can imagine the type of referrals that she initially started getting uh, before she refined her message. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so very important to share what we don't want um, as well. And we're getting down on time. I do want to get to a quick recap and then I want to um, be able to do just quickly touch on some bonus information here. So quick recap, number one, sharing uh, with your networking partners the exact type of referrals you're looking to grow your business by. Number two, up your ask by thinking big and going bigger. Number three, sharing what makes you so special. Number four, naming your power team. Take your power partners, let your networking partners know who they are to build your power team. And number five, to share what you don't want. And then I'm gonna quickly run through this bonus information here. Hopefully we'll have some couple minutes here to share what the best way to present this information to your networking partners. And in Team Referral Network, we have something called coaching sessions. You get together outside of your regularly scheduled meeting. It could happen before your meeting, after your meeting, lunch, on a Zoom while you're both sitting in your offices. It could be wine, who knows, okay? Whatever works for you. Careful on the wine side, you wanna stay on track, okay? But <laughs> coaching sessions, and, and then we have a very specific agenda to follow. And, uh, and if you wanna know more about a coaching session agenda, you can go to teamreferralnetwork.com or email us and we'll get to you how to do a coaching session uh, worksheet. Uh, second way to best present this information to your networking partners is to have quality one minute business commercials. And that's whether you're going to a team meeting or you're going to be introducing yourself at a chamber event. You know, anytime you have the opportunity to share who you are, what you do, why you do it, and what you're looking to grow your business by, okay, you should have a refined message. Winging it is not going to get you the results that you are looking for. And I even go so far, and you'll hear other people in team, I'm sure Don agrees, have a commercial strategy where you literally sit down again in that quiet space, allow a couple of hours to plan out the next three months worth or six months worth of one minute commercials. You could even use these things, take the different topics, slice and dice your business up, do the one minute commercial, making sure you're being specific about teaching your networking partners how to refer you business. And you can even combine those into a 10 minute team presentation. So teach your networking partners how to refer you business is part of being prepared uh, or doing your one minute commercial and then also having a prepared speaking presentation as well. So that's my bonus material. Don, you want to add anything more to that? Just one thing on the one minute commercials. When you take the time and write them out and you follow the six steps, you're being very specific and asking for what you're looking for. When you stand up and you wing it, you typically just talk about your business and never get around to asking for the referral. It's so true. So, so true. Well, Dawn, I've loved doing the Brown Bag Lunch and Learn webinar series this month with you. Thank you so much for being our guest today. It was awesome to have you here. I want to let all of our listeners know that we appreciate you and glad you were here listening to us and sharing this information. If you want any more information about Team Referral Network, please go to teamreferralnetwork.com. Our next Brown Bag Lunch and Learn series will be the third Wednesday of next month. Uh, look for the information to come out directly to you or in our social media. Thanks again, everybody, for being on here. Love to have you. Bye. Bye.